you're here at Sirico Park, here on the site we've got absolutely everything in terms of resource management and the material recovery facility we process five councils material, so that's 2D material, 3D material but also dry mix recycle it. So the plant itself handles about 30,000 tonnes a year running on two shifts. We, we looked at the, the robots as an option because what we had noticed was as we're processing the material, once you've gone through all the positive picking and separation, the residue belt did have a considerable amount of target material on it, like rolling PET in particular and aluminium cans. When we were looking at the robot technology that was out there, the RecycleI robots really shone for us in terms of not just the use of the AI and the data that we can get back from it because capturing that data will become more and more important as we move through into extended producer responsibility. But the other side of it was just the, the way that the company was really forward thinking in terms of it was looking at trying new technology and working really closely with us to develop a system that would work for our unique set of materials that we come across and also the batch process that we operate. We looked at where the installation would work best and it was along the residual belt that we had so they worked to size the robot cages themselves and the access ports to match with the existing infrastructure on the site. Recycle provides AI powered automation to Sirico. We do this by the use of three robots. Each robot has a vision system, which is effectively a camera unit powered by deep learning algorithms that use computer vision to scan and categorize each item, either categorized as residual or one of these two valuable material classes. So one of the beauties of working with AI is the fact that it's not static technology. We can retrain a model, we can reprogram it to do different things. We have actually seen this here at Sirico. For example, we initially just had the third robot programmed to pick aluminium cans, but there wasn't many cans coming through. We noticed that that trend changed, and there was actually quite a few aluminium cans coming through that the third robot alone didn't have the capacity to deal with. So robots one and two, we were then able to reprogram them. So all three robots are now picking PET and aluminium cans and thus extracting more value from the line. In terms of customer support, what we found is it's been a really good process because it actually started out from having a project development phase at the beginning and we moved from that through the installation and then from there on to actually hand over to the customer support team, having someone that's able to come up whenever we need it to help to fix issues or to iron out problems or even to improve the existing settings we've got pays dividends in terms of the amount of material that we can capture off that residual belt. We've seen a number of benefits. One obviously is the more consistent capture of target material on the residual belt within the MRF. So when you're thinking of that, you know, the, the, the robots themselves working at the pick rate they are are probably picking about 30,000 items positively over a shift. And it's consistent throughout that shift, whereas from a human point of view, you, you get peaks and troughs as you go through. So it's enabled us to run the plant on different settings. 